<laughs> Amen. Sometimes we can agree with that, right? Um, there's one verse that I'd like to use to start off this entire concept. And this one verse, if we could apply this one verse in multiple different ways, we could have wonderful communication. See, communication is not hearing what the other person said. The communication is just not saying something. The communication that we must have in every aspect of our life is I must be able to not only hear, receive, understand, and communicate back. It cannot be one-sided in a communication. It has to be multiple. So in James chapter 1, verse 19, this is one verse that if we could understand and apply this one verse, it could change our even marriages, our homes, and even our jobs. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. There's three principles. The first principle is listen intently. Listen intently. If everyone has ears, let him hear. Well, that's kind of a weird verse. We all have ears. But you know what? Just because we have ears, we do not always hear. Sometimes we check out. Sometimes we daydream. Sometimes we're not really that focused on what is being said. But if we would listen intently, if anyone has ears, let him hear. Are you really listening? Are we really paying attention? Focus on this. If we would go to the doctor and our child or our spouse would have a diagnosis. And that doctor would come in after all the tests. And the doctor would come in and he said, I need you to bring the family in. I've been in that room many, many times. And you know what? The kids are not playing over on the side. They are listening intently. They are focused on that doctor. They know exactly what that doctor said. They hear because they want the information. And when we listen intently, it's like the most important person in the room that we are focused on. We are listening intently. And when we can listen intently, focus, not just let them talk, but focus. Maybe even put down our phones and turn off the TV. Maybe just focus. It doesn't have to be long. I would say in most marriages, it could be the first 10 to 15 minutes that when we get into that room, we don't worry about everything else. We focus intently and listen intently. So there's a verbal communication loop. There's a verbal communication loop. And this verbal communication loop is so important. And it starts, there's, there's six things that we need to talk about, and, and they all build with each other. The first one is speak. Speak. What do you mean, speak? We have a mouth, we can speak, but you know what? In a lot of marriages, they don't speak. They don't talk. They go with the flow, they do their own thing. But in order to have communication, the first thing that has to be done is we have to want to talk. And if we do not want to talk, we cannot have the verbal communication loop. So, Listen to this one. Under speak, there are six things, reasons why people communicate, why people talk. The first one is they just talk because of basic information. Is the dinner ready? And we have these six different levels, and, and all of us probably live automatically on that first level. We just get along with that basic information. Is the dinner ready? I gotta go to work at nine o'clock. I'll be home tonight at eight. We just, basic information. We don't share our hearts. We don't share our life. We are cohabitating and we are just sharing basic information. And that next step is partnership. Can we go, can you go to the store for me? Hey, the kids are getting out of school at four o'clock. Can you pick up the kids for me? We, we share some things. We have a partnership. It's not just basic information. Now we have grown under that next level, which is partnership. Can you do something for me? I can't do this by myself. I need you to help me accomplish what I need done. 
So the first one is basic information, and then we go to partnership. And the third loop is conflict resolution. Many times we deal with the first two very easy, but as soon as there's a conflict, as soon as there's an issue in mind, we back off, we shut our mouth, we deal with nothing. We just go with the flow. I will live in the first two levels, but I am not going to do conflict resolution. I am not about to get into a fight because I know that if I bring up this point, it is going to be hell on earth for the next eight hours. And I am not willing to do that. What I want to do is I want to just back away because I don't want to deal with conflict. Sometimes we need to deal with conflict. And sometimes if we do not deal with this third point, we will never get to four, five, and six. We live on one, and sometimes we live on two, but sometimes we have to plod through number three. And the only way that we're going to grow as an individual in our communication is if we have the ability to look somebody face to face in the eye and absolutely open heartedly communicate the hurts and the pains and the problems to make us better. See, many times we are satisfied with the status quo. So often I am used to this, I'm used to what I'm doing now, but sometimes if I have that conflict resolution, I know that I have to deal with some of my own issues, and sometimes I really don't want to do that. But let me tell you that fourth step. After we have that conflict resolution, that fourth step is connection. Connection. We desire connection. And after the conflict resolution, after we have communicated that, then we start communicating in connection. It is said that over a dinner date, there's trying to be 100 attempts of connecting. Whether it is a verbal connection, or whether it's just talking, or whether it's, it's flirting, or whatever the case will be, there's over 100 attempts of communication, of connection, when we're at a dinner. So, sometimes when we don't connect, that speaks volumes. Sometimes when we go through the third conflict resolution, we have no problem with the conflict, but we don't want to have the resolution. Sometimes we want to deal because we're upset, and sometimes we try to fight, but there's no connection because when we don't connect, we live in a state of anger and animosity, and fear. We're cohabitating, but we're not dealing with our issues. Conflict resolution means I want to talk, solve, deal, correct, and move on. But once we can connect, once we connect, we get to the most important, most sacred part of this entire loop, and that's, that's when we get to be that personal information. I'm going to start communicating my fears, my needs, my desires. I'm going to start telling you the things that I haven't told anybody in the past. I'm going to start telling you because I trust you, because I know we're not just basic level, we're not just, we've already done the conflict resolution, and I know that you love me, and I know that we can connect, and we can talk about anything. I am going to start opening up about me and if I am intently listening to somebody and I can see them and I can hear them and I'm speaking to them and they start opening up about personal feelings, dreams, and frustrations, what happens is all of a sudden the heart, the heart that I have that's been hardened, that's been broken, that's been scarred, starts to tenderize and soften. And then I start thinking, wow. He or she wants to talk to me. They want to deal with our issues. So something very supernaturally takes place. The hurt and the pain that we've had in the past, we just open up our hearts and we say, I trust you, and there's my heart. And that's very important because that personal connection of sharing our hearts and our dreams and our life just being able to be completely open and honest gets to be to the number six, and that's intimate communication. Sharing our desires, our needs, our wants, expresses of love, 
and desires romantically and emotionally. But see, we can't get to number six unless we go through number two, three, four, and five. Sometimes we think it'd be wonderful just to have that emotional, that, that relational type relationship that, that everybody likes and everybody needs. But you know what? Marriage and family is the hardest thing that you will ever do. Somebody give me an amen. amen. It has to be. When we look at what's taking place in our society today, when we look at our homes, our foundations, we are in a mess. And in James chapter 1, verse 19, he says this, listen intently. Listen intently. Be swift to hear. Be willing to hear. Not only what you want to hear, but what they need to say. But if we cannot listen to what they need to say, we are people with ears and not hearing because we are so self-absorbed in what we think is right, we never give the other person the ability to give their perspective. And what happens is there's a rift because if somebody can't be heard because we don't care, then they shut down back away, and done. So the first is the very first, being able to speak. The second is listen. Listen intently. When we listen intently, when we hear that same scripture, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. I have to be able to speak, but I have to be able to listen. If I do not hear the fears and the pains and the problems of those people around me, I am saying I am so much more important than you. What I hear, what I need is so much more important than you. What I need to do is I need to speak. I need to be able to listen. And then after I listen, I need to hear and respond. Listen, not just listen, but I need to hear and respond. Communication is not just talking. Communication is not just hearing. Communication is hearing and responding. When I respond, you know what? I, I don't see it that way. I don't think that's what's going on. Here's what I think is going on. And when we have an intimate relationship that we can talk about everything, my fears, my insecurities, my worries, I can talk and I can respond. But if somebody does this, if somebody talks and that response is anger, bitterness, hatred, animosity, throwing you under the bus, hurting you. Guess what we're never going to do? We're never going to respond. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hear what you have to say. And I'm going to say, you know what? I have about 20 things I'd like to talk to you about. But you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it because you aren't going to listen to what I have to say anyway. It has to be your way or the highway. So what I'm going to do is I'm just not going to respond. But what we need to be able to get to on the fourth point is feedback. We need feedback. In order for our communication to grow, it's not me talking, it's us. We are feeding back. We're communicating. We're talking about what we need and how we need to do it. And communication loop is feedback. It can't be communication if it's only one-sided. Now, there can be plenty of arguments that's one-sided, but we're not trying to argue we're trying to build our communication. And then, here's the big one. Process the feedback. Process the feedback. So, we call it um, active listening, is what this is. Process the feedback. So, what you're saying is, what you're saying I need to do is, or what you're saying you feel is, so what he or she is communicating, I can not only listen, I have to hear it, I have to process it, I have to feed back, and then I have to allow that feedback to come back and say, no, <laughs> that's not what I said. I've told you 20 times. No, no, that's not what I said. What I said was this. Oh, the light bulb goes on. Okay, now I understand what you're saying. Now if we do this, this, and this, so what we're doing is we're starting to become on the same team because we're understanding, we're hearing, we're grabbing each other, and we're saying, I want our communication to be one that we can talk about anything. We can laugh 
about anything. We can cry about the most important things. We have a passion and a future, but we cannot have it if we do not talk, if we do not have communication, if we do not have a passion for what we're going to do. And then the last one is after the feedback, it's correct or continue. What is it that I need to change? What is it that I need to do? Or we can say, you know what? We do this thing great. We need to move on to something else. But sometimes when we see the fault in our life, sometimes we have to communicate about it. And sometimes the people that we love the most causes the biggest friction within our life. But the person that loves us the most, we should be able to say, give me what I need. I need correction. I need communication. Jimmy Evans, uh, one of my favorite marriage counselors, he said this. He said, every morning, you ought to be able to have a cup of coffee with your spouse. Every morning, you ought to be able to open up and get a cup of coffee or Starbucks or Coke or whatever you drink in the morning or drink at night and sit down and have an open line of dialogue. Just be able to talk. It hurts and the pains. The problem is we go weeks, months, and sometimes even years before we sit down and say, how are we doing? How's it going? We have the kids and it's a mess and moms are busy, dads are at work, and we stay so busy doing, we have not connected. So what we need to do is we need to be able to correct or continue. The only way that we can correct is if we have all these other things lined out. And now I know without a doubt in this communication loop, and I know I'm intimate, I know I have a passion for you, we know we love each other, we know we have a direct line of what we're gonna try to do, then I can say, you know what? That hurts. When you said that to me, when you, when you did that, that hurt. I'm not just mad, I am hurt. And when I get hurt, my expression is anger. How I express anger is whether it's loud communication or whether I get back and I go into my room and I pout and I need my own time and we all express those things differently but we all have to be honest and open about those things. The second point in the scripture is speak carefully but honestly. See, speaking carefully. <laughs> the person that we're around the most, or whether it's at the job, we have to speak carefully. If we do not speak carefully, what we cause is animosity. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3, he who guards his lips mouth and his tongues keeps himself from calamity. Guards, watches. I need to think before I talk. I need to speak carefully. Be wise what I say and how I say it. And in everything, I must have honesty. When I can be honest and I can speak, we can talk about things. Because I know I'm being honest and I'm being loving and I'm speaking careful. But sometimes when somebody gets upset or when something takes place, the first place they go is in defense mode. And when you go into defense mode, you're not speaking carefully. And sometimes you're being honest, but brutally honest, speaking the truth in, what's that word? Not anger, speaking the truth in love. And sometimes when we get to that point and we go in defense mode, we, we kind of deny our problems and we deny honesty. And there's usually, if we could say, the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is everybody knows the problem. Everybody sees the problem. Anybody that comes into your life sees the problem. But the problem is something that's an elephant in the room that we just deny it. We act like it doesn't take place. And we act like, you know what, if I just close my eyes to the issue, I, it will go away. And what happens? The elephant keeps on eating food and the elephant is bigger than any problem. But we deny the problem. We deny the elephant in the room. I've seen this 
in many cases. A lot of times, major issues have taken place. Sometimes, forgiveness was offered, but it was never communicated. It was not talked about. So what we do is we always have that fear. We always have that animosity, those insecurities. But instead of talking about it, dealing with it, we close our eyes to it. And when we close our eyes to it, the elephant keeps on getting bigger. And as long as that elephant is in the middle of the room and we're not willing to talk about it, we cannot be honest. Because honesty is setting down and dealing with those hard issues. Because when you, as a family, as an employee, as a husband and wife, when you can deal with those hard issues, those things that you know about, she knows about, he knows about, but nobody else knows about, but when you have enough guts and love within your home that you can say, we're going to deal with this because we're going to be better, we're going to be stronger, we're not going to do it for the next year, we're doing this for our life. If we don't deal with this, our life, our happiness, our joy, our intimacy is over because we're afraid to deal with the elephant in the room. But once we break down that elephant, once we communicate about the most important thing that we have, what happens is honesty takes place. If we are willing to deal with the hard things, the easy things are nothing. Because we know that we are going to suck it up. We're going to work hard. We're going to deal with issues. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 26, very simple scripture says, an honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. An honest answer. But the opposite of that, a lie is what? A slap on the face. When somebody is a habitual liar, you don't even, don't even talk to me. If I can't believe, why would I want to hear? But when somebody is honest and you're trying to open up a line of communication, when we can be honest, what happens is God starts doing great works within our life. But then it says, in that last phrase, it says, slow to speak and slow to wrath. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. Quick to listen, slow to speak, but then when you have spoken and the other person hears, we have to be slow to wrath. That means you have to give space you have to build margins within your communication. You have to accept that our spouse, our coworkers, and our family do not believe everything that you believe and do not receive everything that you receive the same way. So we have to be slow to get angry. We have to be able to process. The problem with this is sometimes in our marriages and our families, we have so immature, we are, we are so immature in our communication language, we can't handle somebody opposing us. Now, we have grown up in a culture of male-dominant society in the home. And if we have a male-dominant society in the home, if the man speaks, woman, you listen. And if you don't listen, woman, you are in trouble. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible calls it mutual submission. Mutual submission. I'm going to honor her. She's going to honor me. And because we honor each other, everyone has the right to speak and to be heard. To speak and be heard. Sure, the man has been given by God, the prominent of the protector and the spiritual leader of the home, the priest of the home. But in a relationship, in our conversation, our communication, it is co equal. And if it is not co-equal in our communication, what happens is anger starts getting in place. I don't have a say in the matter. You never listen to me. Why do you care what I do? You don't care anyway. You don't care what I do. Because anger, our words, our actions, our nonverbal threats can kill honest and open communication. Kills it. We want the ultimate life. But until we can deal with the very simple things of life, 
of being able to talk to any person with honest and a loving heart, I'm going to talk to you because I love you. I'm going to talk to you because we need to talk about the elephant in the room. I'm going to listen to you. We're going to talk. We're going to have verbal communication. We're going to have some give and take. But I love you. You may not agree with everything. I'm not agreeing with everything that you say. But if we can do this one simple thing, be slow to anger. Being able to talk without the fear of anger opens up a line of communication that we've never experienced before. But as soon as I say something, I know the response is going to be an eruption of a volcano that's going to last for a week. <laughs> not me. Not me. I'd rather go play golf. I want to go to work. I want to do everything I need to do. But I'm not going to listen to this eruption. So we don't talk about the elephant in the room. Anger is a major, major deterrent to open, honest communication. How do we deal with that? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. We have to learn to be gentle. We have to learn that the people we're talking to, in most cases, are just as important, are more important than I am. Their opinion can be better than my opinion, their ways can be better than my ways. It doesn't have to be my way. It can be our way. And if it can end up being our way, what we are doing is we're going down a journey of life together, holding hands, communicating, instead of just going for a walk, cohabitating together, raising the kids, making money, putting the money in the bank for our retirement. There's so much more than life walking on a journey. It is experiencing something that is open and honest in the line of communication that I can talk about anything at any time as open my insecurities, my vulnerabilities, my strengths and my weaknesses. I can hear yours and you could talk to me about how I hurt you and I could talk to you how I was insecure and it's not about my masculinity. It's about my honesty. I am not going to degrade myself by being honest with you. What I'm going to do, I'm going to raise me up and I'm going to raise you up and together we're going to grow. Listen, in our anger, there's a word that you have to learn and I had to learn. It's called tone. Tone. I can say the same thing, but it's how I say it that counts. And when I have the right tone, the honesty with truth, with love, is all about how. What am I saying? I'm not going to change what I say, but I can change how I say it. Because if I have that open line of communication, once I get mad, and once my tone goes over the top, what I'm saying to any person is, you dead or just calm down. This is mine. I am going to win. I always win. And the way I win is I'm going to dominate. And if I have to dominate to win, well, what about us? What about honesty? What about that honest love when I stood up and I say I'm going to love you, we're going to do this? It's a co-equal mindset in communication. A hot-tempered man stirs up dissension but a patient man calms the quarrel. Calms the quarrel. Be patient. And what you do, so important. This one verse could change our lives. So then, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. When we can do that, when we talk to people, they'll look at you in the eyes with respect. When you can't do that, they're going to look in your eyes with fear. And if somebody talks to you because they're afraid of you, there's no intimacy 
with you. We must listen, think, talk honestly, but get rid of the anger and be the kind of person that God can use in every area of our life. Mothers, wouldn't it be awesome with your kids respected you like that? Wouldn't it be awesome in your relationships if we could learn and teach our kids how to argue? Because our kids, they're little mini-me's. And how we treat each other is how they are going to treat us and how they are going to treat their spouse one way, one day. So we need to learn that. This one verse, if you memorize anything this week, this would be the tool that could change the way that you see life. Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, we come before you and we thank you for your love to us. And Lord, the ability to communicate with an open and honest life, speaking the truth, hearing wisdom, agreeing or changing, but not getting upset. Lord, be with each and every person in here. When they, when we need to communicate, we need to deal with those issues. Give us that wisdom. Give us that ability to understand that communication is vital to a loving, happy home. Lord, we love you for that. Be with us today. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.